Welcome to my channel. I'm super excited for you to be here and in this video, wow, it has been forever since I uploaded I know I'm not very consistent and I'm so sorry you guys. I feel so bad I'm going to quickly just update you guys like two seconds. I've been traveling taking some time off Oh, I should tell you about my hair too. If you guys aren't following me on my Instagram and you're just following subscribe to me on my youtube channel you would have only seen this just now <laughs> so i did get my hair cut um a while ago actually now it was a lot shorter it was like about this high it was pretty short um and it grew thank god uh because i don't know if i liked it that short but i did get a haircut and a color and it looks really good i mean i like it um hopefully you guys like it too I do miss my old hair. I was looking back through my Snapchat and I'm like, oh my gosh, my hair was so nice. I feel like you don't like appreciate what you have until you lose it. So sad. Anyway, so yeah, I did get my hair cut. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm really excited that my um, channel is still expanding and you guys are enjoying the videos that I've uh, posted. Please do share them. That will be really helpful. Okay, so if you're new and you haven't watched the other videos, basically what I do with my Your World Concept series, I give you guys the vignette, not the full vignette, summarize the vignette, and then go through all the wrong answers and obviously talk about the right answers and then give you a little bit more information. The explanation part of Your World, that's what I'm summarizing, but in words uh, of my own as well as uh, just like quoting from them. All these videos are definitely good for both step one and step two. If you are interested, keep on watching and make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you are subscribed uh, make sure to hit the bell button as well so that way um, you guys know as soon as I post my videos so let's get started says i'm going to be talking about factor five latent i take your world notes um i'll show you guys in another video how i take my your world notes so what is factor five latent it's a type of hereditary thrombophilia a patient comes in with shortness of breath since um this morning with no chest pain fever chills she comes into the yard ER. she has no significant medical history a family history shows uh, a death in the father at 45 years of age from a heart attack Patient is normal tensive afebrile with tachypnea. She has normal chest osculation and no murmurs. However, she has mild swelling on the right lower leg on the exam. ECG shows sinus tachycardia. Her labs include normal PT and PTT levels, but increased D-dimer. What contributes to her condition? First of all, you have to identify what she has, what's going on with her. So she has shortness of breath, tachypnea, tachycardia. She has swelling of the right lower leg so that right away gives me dvt causing pulmonary embolism a dvt is deep vein thrombosis so you have thrombosis within the uh, leg it's going to be the right leg which then the clot embolizes and it goes into the lungs so coming to the lungs it causes shortness of breath attack cardia and actually when you do a chest x-ray you're not going to see anything wrong so the uh, lungs are going to look normal if you have infiltrations you're not going to pick pe if if you have any abscesses or any findings you're not going to really pick P. The most common finding within the lung would be atelectasis and pulmonary embolism but other than that the um, the lungs usually on chest x-ray look normal in pulmonary embolism. This patient has once again shortness of breath, tachycardia, tachypnea and they have a right lower leg swelling. That's a huge hint that this patient is um, most likely suffering from pulmonary embolism. You have to identify what's going on. And this patient is young. So I didn't say the age of this patient, but um, I didn't type it out either. Okay, so why does she have DVT? Does she have a history of like her um, being in the hospital for a long time? Because uh, if you're hospitalized, you're in bed um, for a long period of time, you're not moving around and this causes a thrombosis formation. But if they don't have that history and they've just suddenly had this finding and they've had this lower leg swelling, now you're going to think of more hereditary thrombophilia. And one of the most common is actually factor 5 latent. Uh, factor 5 is part of the coagulation cascade 
Kate. If you do not know what that is, you should definitely look it up. In step one, you need to know more details about the coagulation cascade in case you don't know what coagulation is. Coagulation is when you clot, okay? So you are essentially starting from, depending on whether it's intrinsic or extrinsic, you're going to start from uh, factor 13 and come down to forming uh, thrombin, which is the activator from prothrombin to thrombin. It's the activator um, that converts fibrinogen to fibrin, and the fibrin uh, forms this mesh, which uh, is involved with uh, clotting. It's a more permanent clotting compared to the platelets. The platelets are going to be the initial clotting. Fibrin does the more permanent. In our bodies, we have this uh, natural anticoagulants, uh, which is protein C and S. They work together, and they're going to inhibit factors such as factor five to stop the coagulation so we're not constantly clotting so we need both um you have to have the yin and the yang <laughs> You have to have both in order to, you know, keep a good balance. Protein C, what this does is it inhibits factor 5. It stops factor 5 from going on, essentially stops the formation of uh, thrombin. What is factor 5 laden? So this is essentially a mutation that occurs with factor 5. So now it basically changes its receptors and now protein C is not working on it. So protein C exists. There is protein C. There are protein Cs, but it's not binding to the factor 5 because factor 5 has changed itself it has camouf not camouflage but it is like it has put on a wig it put on um you know different clothes and it even you know tanned itself entirely so that it is a totally different looking and protein c doesn't recognize it and now uh factor five can constantly make thrombin and if you make thrombin what does that mean you're constantly converting from fibrogen fibrinogen to fibrin which is going to form a lot of fibrin um mesh work and that's going to lead your to your thrombosis so, um, factor V laden is uh, an autosomal dominant mutation. The two differentials that I'm going to talk about in this video anti-cardiolipin, lupus anticoagulant. So those two uh, make up the anti-phospholipid antibodies. Anti-cardiolipin, this is going to be the one that's associated with a pregnant woman that constantly comes in due to, um, due to miscarriage. If you see someone that has lupus, they most likely have uh, the lupus anticoagulant. So now how can you um, differentiate them? So in the vignette, you will it will indicate uh, whether the patient has an increase in PTT or PT. Um, it will indicate if they did like a mixing study and it corrected or it didn't correct. Um, so those things are gonna be illustrated. Both antiphospholipid antibodies and patients with factor V laden are going to have increase in PTT. Um, but in patients with antiphospholipid antibody, when you do a mixing study, it will not correct itself because this is an antibody working against it. Whereas in factor V laden, if you're providing factor V, because remember it's mutated factor V, provide the, um, the factors, it is going to work. Um, uh, in other words, it is going to react to the protein C. PTT is going to get corrected. But in someone that has antiphospholipid antibodies, because it's an antibody, so even if you put it in a mixing study, it's not going to do anything because there's an antibody going against it. So that's why in antiphospholipid antibodies, you're not going to have a corrected PTT after doing a mixing uh, study. The second one is antithrombin deficiency, which is also one of the hereditary thrombophilias, but it's so rare to have a hereditary type. It is more common to have the um, acquired type. And with antithrombin deficiency, this is usually in the setting of DIC. So someone's really sick and they have hypotension, they have everything, PTT, PT, and bleeding time, everything is messed up. Um, uh, or they have cirrhosis or they have nephrotic syndrome. These are more likely to have antithrombin uh, deficiency. So what is antithrombin? Antithrombin is also involved with um, that balance. So it uh, tries to inhibit the coagulation cascade. So how do you know it's protein C deficiency as compared to uh, factor V laden? So protein C is going to inhibit factor V and factor 8A, um, and this is going to prevent um, too much clotting from occurring. So if someone doesn't have protein C, 
they're going to be hypercoagulable, right? So if someone doesn't have protein C, if they have really low levels or they don't have, they're usually asymptomatic until you've given them warfarin. In a vignette, uh, they're put on warfarin and then a couple days later, they're going to have this uh, skin necrosing. Right away, you're going to think, okay, could this be someone that has protein C deficiency? And that's what it most likely is, and that's the answer choice you're going to choose. Warfarin is an anticoagulant. The factors two, seven, nine, and 10 are inhibited by warfarin and it also inhibits protein CNS. This is why we do the heparin and warfarin bridging because at the initial onset of warfarin working, you are going to have really low levels of uh, uh, protein C as well. And actually, the first thing that goes is protein C, um, and then eventually the uh, factors are going to get inhibited. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you guys for joining in. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell button uh, so that every time I'm posting a video, you get a notification. Uh -huh.